we're back on the ladder. So we got two of these guys. Um, as you heard, it clicked, but it's not heating and it's definitely buzzing and I can feel some heat being produced. So let's go ahead and open these things up and see what's going on. So here we go. Okay, so this is when it comes handy to be able to read a schematic. So I'm looking at this thing. I'm trying to figure out what controls it. So all this stuff, the fan relay, all that doesn't exist, okay? Anything that's like dotted lines, that's optional. So this one doesn't have it. So the way the fan kicks on is through this temperature switch right here. Once temperature reaches a certain point, it closes. Uh, so we have high voltage coming off of here, right? And it leads over to F1. So that's hot all the time, it looks like. But then when the temperature gets up to a certain point, it'll turn off, it'll turn the fan on and then energize F2, which the motor is attached to, which is right there. So that'll energize the motor. So I think what's happening is either this switch is bad and it's not energizing the motor. So then this trips and kills the electric elements or um, the motor's bad. And it doesn't look like there's a run cap. So it's probably a shaded pull motor. We have two terminals here. We have F1 and F2. So we have line voltage coming from this pink wire here going to F1, then from F1 to our temperature switch, then back into F2 Right, and then F2 goes into the motor, and then the motor connects to terminal three, which we'll call this terminal three. So one, two, three, um, the black wire. So I have one meter lead there. So if I check between F1 and terminal three, I should have voltage. That's normal. Now, right now the fan's not being called for. So if I go to F2 to terminal three, I should have nothing, which is correct. If I were to check terminal two, and F2, I would have voltage, but that's because that's creating a separate circuit if we do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and energize the unit. So the um, electric strips are gonna kick on first. And then once it heats up that sensor, which is right back there, um, I should have voltage to F2, which will tell me that the temperature switch is working. So let's go ahead and crank this on. There's our electric strips. And then I'm gonna go to F2. You can see we have nothing yet. Okay, so our switch is working fine. Our fan is not spinning very well. So it looks like it's just kind of stuck. Let's see if we can help it a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so the high limit has already tripped. The fan's just not spinning fast enough. And it's slowly, let me see if it's still energized. Yeah, see, so the fan's still energized, so the fan motor's dead. So thankfully, the other one's exactly like this, so we already know how the circuit works. So we should be able to figure that out a lot faster. All right, so we're on the other one. This one's a lot higher, which is gonna suck, but same deal. Uh, terminal three and F1, we should have voltage. Yep. F2, we should have nothing. Yep. Okay, we're gonna turn this on. Okay, heat strips have kicked on. All right. So we have voltage, so that means our temperature switch is good. So fan motor is messed up. That's crazy that both of them fail at the same time. We're gonna go ahead and get the model and serial number off of this order some motors. I'm gonna take these down just because it'll be a lot easier to work on and safer. So I'm back, I got my two motors. We're doing that guy and we're doing this guy. I got the power kit uh, killed. So we'll start with this one since it's easier to get to and then we'll kind of figure out how this works and then we'll go from there, do the same thing on the other one, so. Okay, so we need to remove the power. So that's our line voltage. To remove this little, I don't know what it's called, but the locker nut. Uh, you can use these Klein things. They're great. That looks like it's a three-quarter, so it's going to be the gray one. Um, you can pick this up on my Amazon store if you want to support the channel. Okay, so we got this all removed. I put the ring back on here, just in case. Uh, now I just need to take that bolt off and drop the whole thing. All right, so it's going to be a three-quarter bolt. We want to hold on to it down here with the wrench. 
wrench so it doesn't spin out. And then I will have to grab it and bring it down, so, yep. Okay, so we got her off. So now uh, I'm gonna blow this all out once I take it apart. So now I gotta figure out how it comes apart. It looks like this, this middle piece comes out because there's a bunch of screws. And I think once I do that, I'll have access to, you know, get it apart more. Basically, I need to get this face off so I can get to the motor. So uh, we'll start there. So I'm going to remove this first, get all these screws out, see if this comes out. It looks like it's all one piece. And then I should have more access, so let's give it a shot. All right, so we got her all apart, pain in the butt. I ended up just cutting the wires just because it'll make it easier for me to figure out where they go afterwards. Um, but yeah, so this is it. So now we gotta take this off, we gotta take the blade off, and then there's some, looks like some uh, nuts here holding that on. So of course none of these fit. Um, and I got this bit here, which is out of my Klein set, but uh, this is uh, 764, and it doesn't quite fit. So I suspect that this is metric. Okay, so luckily I have the metric set too. So it's a three millimeter hex for that so yeah okay so i'm gonna take off these two three eight nuts okay all right let's get the new one in there okay all right so i'm using my metric uh three millimeter hex because you know we use SAE here in America, but let's make it crazy and use like one, one metric screw. Like literally that's the only thing that's metric on here. All right, let's see, not hitting nothing, sweet. All right, so now we gotta put this thing back together, but before I do that, I'm gonna blow out this whole thing with uh, some CO2 and get it all, get all the dust out of it. Since we got it apart, might as well. All right, so we blew that out with my CO2, good old drain cap. We're gonna go ahead and put this on that so that's not being used the white is and the black it's not being used so it's just gonna be blue and white okay so we got her in place um, I don't know if you can see this but you can see the wire I have it zip tied out of the way so it's not gonna hit the fan blade uh, so now we got to put in all our screws so there's four bolts uh, one here one here one here that holds this whole back plate and then there's some little quarter inch ones that, you know, attach to like the shelves and whatnot. And then you have to snake this uh, thermistor through. Uh, so yeah, we should be good to go. We're gonna put all the screws in, put it all back together and then rehang it. And then it, uh, well, we gotta make our electrical connections, but it looks like the wire should actually reach now. Um, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll be all right. Is that blue wire, yeah. Yeah, they're gonna just barely reach, so that's cool. So anyway, uh, let's get this all back together. Alrighty, so we got her all put back together. We're gonna go ahead and rehang her up there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and cycle it and hopefully it works. All right, so we got everything reconnected. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and crank that up and uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it power and see what happens. All right, the contact are closed. So we're just waiting for the temperature switch to close. And then our fan should kick on. There she goes. So one down, one more to go. All right, so just got the second one put back together and hung. Everything's wired up. We're gonna cycle it and make sure she works. All right, power's been restored. Contactor closed. There goes the fan. Yep, she's nice and warm. So anyway, Hopefully this helps you out when you come across one of these electric unit heaters. Uh, that's how you diagnose them. That's how you change out the blower motors. And uh, there you go. So hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment to me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, visit my tool store or pick up some work socks. Thanks for watching.